brain dogma. So, hey, well, oh, what you were saying, you sparked my memory there. So on the dog, on, on the on the dogma about you know you can't mm-hmm. you, the brain can't uh, you can't get it back once it's gone that kind of mentality. You, I thought my story was pretty pretty cool that that everybody told me I couldn't pave parking lots in every state in the country. <laughs> I was told that, and I said I I, I, I got. I, I got to be able to do it. I got to be able to pay parking lots every state in the country, right? And nobody did it before that. And uh, and eventually we did it. But my story looks like uh, I'm, I'm I'm just figuring out how to, <laughs> how to how to make the wheel, you know, compared to yours. So you make you know, no, so no, it's like, no, okay. I very, think very, all, all, very similar, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're told you can't do something and you and you don't accept exactly. it, exactly, and you, and you continue to think, wait, wait, I'm going to prove them, I'm going to prove them wrong. It might take a while it's, to p- prove it, but it it's pretty fun it's, when you can do it. Yeah, no, no. That, that, I think this is the part, and I think you mentioned something, Gary. I think uh, in life, everybody has a, a purpose. And when you look at the whole, I mean, we, we are a multidisciplinary study. In fact, I tell people, you know, sometimes I find societies like the human body. Some people have to work to be a neuron. They mm-hmm. need to only the function. Other people like needs to be a liver. Other people need to be like the skin. Yeah. Or they, they carry the food is like the blood cells, you know. So when you compare society like this, we are an organism and we have to do many things. And I think with a, with a purpose, I think it's very important. But I think the, the question you mentioned is very important when people say, oh, it's impossible. Mm-hmm. This is not. And I think this is where creativity comes, when there is a necessity and also that dogmas that we can change. But most important when people ask me is about what is the reason, the sources behind me that move me and I never give up. And that's because... I want to serve the people. Mm. And it's the patient who have moved me always because when there is a problem, I have to find the solution. This is it. Yeah. So, and, and the only reason I move to one place to the other place is because I want to find the skills, education with purpose. Yeah. And so, and then that's why I, I, I am this kind of person who never like, even my wife, she said to, when I met her, my wife is from New York and, uh, and she came to Texas. We met, and she. I wanted to take her out, and she says no. But I said, "This is the guy, the most persistent guy, who will never accept <laughs> things for no." And so I, I tricked my wife to take, teach me a class, and uh, and and I went with her. And so, so. Well, wait just, a minute, wait a minute. Okay. I, I, I want to go into that story <laughs> oh, a little bit further. I, 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 okay, I, okay. I had the pleasure of meeting his beautiful bride uh, this weekend, and she said, uh, "You know," I, I said, well, "Tell me about when you first met this guy," and she goes. My girlfriends and I thought he was kind of a gigolo. He was a gigolo. <laughs> Every time we saw him, he was with four, five, six girls around him, laughing and, and having a good time, you know, coming in late or whatever. And we just thought he's like a gigolo. We just, I wasn't interested in him because I thought, seriously, he was a gigolo. And then he goes into why, you know, I wasn't a gigolo. I just like girls and had, had fun. But, uh, but anyway, yeah. And uh, his, if, you, if you meet him, his personality is one that everybody wants to be close it's to, right? It's contagious. No, so. no. But, but the, one, the one thing is very important because I was telling, uh, I was telling this story. I used to make sure I said, don't, don't talk that story to the people. I said, no, the, the reason <laughs> is because when I came to be an intern in Baylor, uh, actually there was, uh, remember, I didn't speak English. I learned wow. English. I, I came to United States. Yes. I read English. I could have write, but uh, um, but I couldn't. I could not speak. So so, uh, uh, so so one of the things is that I I realized no matter how much I can read in the in the book for two three hours, I could know a lot of grammar, but there's nothing like speaking. And because Baylor didn't have a place for students or for interns, so we live in a building that belongs to the Texas Woman University. Oh, and here it is. How convenient. We have a convenience. So we have nurse students, occupational therapy, nutritionists, uh, physical therapy. And uh-huh. the, and so, in fact, my wife, she was studying a master's degree in nutrition. So, uh, and so I said, you know, the 95% of the students, they were female. So yeah. we have, so I. So it wasn't I your fault. It wasn't your fault. So it was not my fault. I think you know exactly. So that's why she always says, you know, oh my God, when I say, oh, my, what do you think I have to learn English? <laughs> <laughs> and if you're going to find teachers to teach you English, it might as well be girls <laughs> instead of guys, right? <laughs> exactly. That would, especially, exactly. That's much better, you know. Oh, that's so <laughs> anyway. funny. Yeah, no, but, but, I, but, but I think, uh, Gary, that one of the things is that um, I said the, the, how it, it comes to be, because I, 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 you have to be very um, 
also realistic in science what things you can accomplish yeah. and what things you cannot accomplish. And so when I became a scientist, I realized that how complex and the difficulty is to, to try to, to help the brain diseases. Mm -hmm. And in fact, with the training, and believe me, I have my wonderful mentors at Harvard. All I could tell you all of my mentors that have made me who I am today. Mm -hmm. and, and this is very important. But at the same time, the science that I have learned from Harvard, MIT, for some reason, I thought I, even in my lifetime, I will see something like what I'm seeing today because I knew something. But I, my goal was never to stop that I want to make difference in the brain research. Mm -hmm. I want to find transplant something. We need to cure that. But when I met Dr. Kumar with his new technology, now mm -hmm. Dr. Kumar comes from the world of physics, quantum okay. physics comes from the world of engineering, a different field that I was never really uh, uh, exposed to. Yes. And when I see the regeneration capacity that that has, so that 16 year old kid who dreamed a lot many years ago of that, I said, yes, now I can see we're beginning a task to cure the incurable. Mm -hmm. It will take us many years, but first we need to improve the quality of life. We are making the difference. I know sometimes people, uh, in fact, they criticize me. They say, oh, Roberto, you shouldn't think too, too big like this. I say, but imagine, it's like a, when the first time the America saw we're going to go to the moon. If you don't dream go to the moon, you will never reach no, go to the moon. you're not going to get there. So we, exactly, how you get there? Or you could say, well, maybe we do half a way or we try to, Try to go to the moon. I said, no, no, no. It's only one way. <laughs> Let's yeah. cure that. Let's yeah. go to the moon. So dream so big. The, dream big, right? You only have one life to live. Why, why, why dream small, right? You have exactly. one life to live. Dream big. There's no reason exactly. not to. Exactly. That, that, exactly. That dream big. And so, so, and, and let me go back to to tell you a little about my, my uh, the story. Very funny story about my mother because, you know, since I was the oldest in my family, uh, my mom didn't know. Uh, how to advise my dress of my brothers. So whatever the school I went to, every brother of mine has to go through that. So all my three brothers, they got college degrees. Uh, to, uh, one of them, my second brother, he has a master's degree, a PhD in education, and he's becoming a good leader in Mexico. And so everybody has that. So, uh, uh, and in fact, uh, um, so then, but my mom, but my, my second brother who, is a very big position in education. He oversees over, in one point, over 120,000 students, the program, wow. the school, high school, and all that. It's a very, so, but then when my mother, they ask him, what do your children do? They say, I really don't know because <laughs> Roberto is a doctor, but he doesn't see patients. My other son is a teacher, but he doesn't teach classes. You don't know what the hell these guys are doing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of losers, actually, you know. Kind of they're, losers, they're, not guys, doing, you know, they don't... <laughs> they're, they're kind of scattered brain. They're really not getting done what she thought you were going to get done. Exactly. You know? And I said to my mom, time to time, I said, Mom, listen, you know, what I'm doing is I want to invest things that in the future doctors will be using my signs. And yes. this is what it is yeah. to be that. And I think she 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 gets it now. So tell me and, about tell me about this doc. I mean, when you you know think think tell me just tell us about uh, some of the great successes that uh, neurocytonics has had current, you know, so far and, uh, and, and where, you know, kind of where you're, where, what the direction is in the, in the near future and the distant future with uh, some of the great successes you've had. And I know it's hard yes. to talk about this stuff because you, it's not like the whole world can, can, can have access to the, this, these studies at this point or get involved in them, right? So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, uh, I mean, we are right now, uh, in fact, uh, one of the, the current clinical trials that is registered in the NIH, the National Libraries Clinical Trials that go up, uh, if you get, uh, get information about what we're doing with the cerebral palsy is, is available there. Uh, and, I and I think, uh, but before um, uh, the success stories that we have is that um, uh, we have patients with a, with a stroke that they went to two, three years with the lesions already um, happened and they were handicaps and they have very difficult quality of life. And then when we have given the treatment, the protocol for a stroke, we have improved people in the, for example, the movements, like 90% of the handicap before and after. Yeah. And this is in a short period of a month. Uh, we have some cases with coma patients that were able to be awake from coma. 
And so this is what's the most significant thing that I, like I said to you, I, I never thought this could be possible. I, I thought maybe in my other next, another lifetime, maybe in the future will be possible. Mm -hmm. But now we're talking about real life and the real patients and, uh, and the patients with, for example, with Alzheimer's. People who are very, very, in fact, almost in a nursing home, they went back to their homes. Mm. Now they're able, we are able to stop the disease. They can improve and regain the memory they have. They start to recognize the families. I mean, this is, but then in the small studies. Uh, on the other hand, Parkinson's disease was very interesting too. We, we were able to decrease almost like one third of the medicines that people were taking having with so many side effects of the movement sure. and now we're able to do that so but but this is the first stage of our research is is the proof of concept number one we see that there's no side effects because the frequency we use is very similar like the the mri the magnetic resonance mm -hmm. imaging so that's a wonderful thing about this therapy but the second thing is in order to prove uh, of course, the, the safety, there is no side effects, and the efficacy, we must do a clinical trials. And sure. that's what they, they, they comes the expense. That's why it's the future of neurosatonics. But I can tell you, Gary, the, this field of neurosatonics, the combination of neurosciences, the brain sciences, with physics and engineering is a new field. Because if we are able, and this is my, my hope, if we're able to regenerate the brain, we can almost regenerate any part of the body. Mm. So the future of medicine it still will be a component of what we have, but there is so many incurable diseases that we can make that difference. And that's why I feel that the future is coming and we have to have this kind of technology. That's why I'm very, very excited because uh, this is something that, that can be done. I mean, uh, uh, a, a few years ago, I invented a, a device for prevention of cervical cancer using light and using uh, a, a component of a cream uh, <clears throat> with porphyrin. Uh, and that invention, the reason I mentioned to you, uh, it just opened my eyes because I was able to see that we like and do something in the human body. In the, in, the, in, the, in a therapeutic way. So when I see it now today that we can have technology and physics that we can speak to our cells in our, in our body and to regenerate that part wow. is a new science. Yeah. So that's the part is excited. That's the, that's the reason why we have to have the center in the United States. This is because, it, it, you know, the, this is what is going to be moved forward from this. Because I know in the future we will have different machines who can tell you the diagnosis and tell you many things that we see these scientific, uh, science, uh, science fiction movies. Mm -hmm. I say it's reality. Actually, it's reality. But we have to be you know, doing the, the right clinical trials, the right way to, to prove that what we're, our hypothesis is, is true. So, and, and so where do, you, where do you see it going in the coming, let's say, you know, year different than the last few years? Uh, you know, wh what do you see um, the, the progress to look like? And then, uh, you know, five, five and 10 years away. And so, so yeah. understanding how far you've gone so far, where do you see it progressing over the next short term, year, two years, and then five, yeah. 10 years? Yeah, the the the, uh, Gary, the the one most beautiful thing about this technology, which is is fantastic, is because Dr. Kumar already spent three decades of his life inventing this device. So already we spent that, and somehow I was think I spent also three decades of my life to train to do that. Mm. So here we are in a different parts of the world. We meet each other, and we create a new concept to move this forward. So so what I think is great that we are not far away for helping people now. This is a science that is, for example, we hope that maybe next year the FDA can help us to get the approval for the, for cerebral palsy. Once we have that, Alzheimer's needs to be, we are actually preparing for the next Alzheimer's protocols for Alzheimer's and stroke. So, so I can see that the next five years, at least these five diseases, I can be already been approved. I'm moving to, towards the that. So, so, so as you can see, you know, we, for example, on Alzheimer's disease, we have like uh, 5.6 million Americans mm -hmm. with this problem. We spend over 280 billion uh, US dollars at this point. And right now we have a therapy is ready. 
but we have to do clinical trials. But if I do in two, three years, we will help so much yeah. our economy. And actually, and so it's not far away. We're not far away from that. So the one point is that having the head, building the headquarters in this area will be important. But we also, we already have to think about building centers for Alzheimer's disease sure. across the United States. Maybe one have in Chicago, we have the devices there. People can come one in Washington, New York, you know, Texas, San Francisco. I mean, I can see that in the next 10 years being spread in these centers around, Absolutely. around the world. Absolutely. You know, and I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm kind of an engineer through, through uh, trial and error and paving. So would you be able to train so the, me to run one of those clinics, maybe? No, no, no. This is, this is you know, I need to I need to learn from you, Gary, because tell me how, how can we do all these things? Because this is the part that is, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know how to, um, you know, that's why we need experts yeah, to yeah. help us. So tell how me, to, to what, move that. how much, you know, think of the research that you're doing now. I mean, how much does it cost to do research to get something from this concept to actually a product? Um, I know it's all over the place, but give me an idea what your thoughts are there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, just to give you the idea, for, for example, for medical devices, for giving one approval, it costs between 25 to $100 million. Wow. Okay? Mm -hmm. for, for, for example, for this device that I, we have for the first cerebral palsy, we hope it's going to cost us between 12 to $15 million. That's it. I mean, wow. it's not too much. Wow. Uh, and so, and the reason and uh, we could be able to make that happen, but of course, if we have more sources, it's going to be even faster, you know? Sure. So, so like I, I see, like, for example, for my center and for doing the clinical trials, like if we raise like $100 million, we can be so fast. And in five years, we have these five indications ready for the people. Right. But, you know, but the one part is that so also imagine for me is that for investors, sometimes, you know, it depends on the investors. They want to make sure they want to make money right away in mm -hmm. that. And I, and I said to them, I said, you know, and especially in clinical trials, when you are in the in doing the clinical trials, they they want to already have been approved and everything like this. So sure. that's why it's been it, I have been so fast doing this despite of the small resources, because I also want to make sure once you have one approval, the market in Mexico were going to be open actually in a few months. India is ready to open the market. So we are already working, trying to do, but the United States, you know, unfortunately sometimes takes too long because FDA, it takes more time. Sure. And unfortunately so, this is what happened, you know. So but I, we are, you're actually be ready yeah. to go to market in a, in a for-profit business in India and Mexico. In the coming yes. months, yeah, in the coming months, yeah, without exactly. a, without FDA approval, right? With FDA approval, correct? Okay. Because they had the, we had the approvals of FDA in their respective countries. That's why we're working on that. So, so what stops us from 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 building that first that first uh, research center in DC, let's say, and you're you know a mile away from your house, whatever, right? What stops yes. us from building that? What what are the what are the the the, the roadblocks from here to there, currently? Oh. Just currently, it's just the support, money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to do more, just raise money. That's it. Just raise money. That's it. Because yeah. we're ready. I mean, already we have our plans, we have everything, and we're, we're working on that. I mean, oh, this I, is the plan. I saw, because it, they, they, I saw it. It's a yes. beautiful, beautiful oh, exactly. plan, amazing plan. It's, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, Gary, because also, you know, I want to, to show the people our first study, there's the evidence. We already have a center. I already created a functional center that we can do that. So, it's something not just think about it's a paper, it's already a fact, mm -hmm. it's doing that. And we already have more evidence from the control study to see the evidence what happened. And so, and, and I am ready to publish a few papers to show the data that what significant it is. So so I, I, I think this at this point today, Gary, we, we need to be ready soon, very soon mm -hmm. to build this because you know, it takes years to do that, but at the same time, in the meantime, we can do, you know, rental the place, equipment the place. I can get ready a center in six months, for example. Is, is there any regulation in, in, in the United States that slows you down or anything that slows you down uh, uh, governmental-wise? No, I, I think at this point we have to do the research, first the research proposal. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, And, you know, one of the things actually, Gary, uh, and this is the beauty of the United States, the beauty of America. I mean, when I always I tell people, you know, Sometimes being an American is like a state of mind, you know, it's, it's not just being an American. It's more than because we are people who, who we just, you know, if, if, they, if you work hard, 
it gives this land gives you the opportunity to be whoever you want to be and, and you know when people see that for example especially when you are a person who are suffering with alzheimer's or a child with cerebral palsy and then you know that there is a treatment there you want to do like this right yeah, away and yeah. that's why sometimes i feel myself so desperate i would i wish i could do it right away because what i have seen five years ago already is there is here you know so so i, I think this is the great thing and, and for example in the united states we have what is called the institutional review board who review the ethics committee mm -hmm. when i have talked to the people they are so great because when i told them what is what we are doing and so oh my goodness how can we help you you know so so you still need to have regulations you have that but there is committees that they tell you and this is what i have learned as a scientist mm -hmm. as a physician what we have to do i think at this point it takes time what i i find perhaps that is going to be a little as slow as the fda the process sometimes sure. takes a little long but that's the the rigorosity that needs to be done is but right now i think Yes. Is it any faster when you're doing the research in the U.S. To, to, for the FDA to, to approve stuff or no? Any different if you're in India and Mexico compared to if you're doing the research in the U.S.? Um, I think, uh, you know, as long as you do the studies for United States guidelines for the FDA, uh, it's almost the, the same. In fact, many clinical trials, 50% of the last stage of clinical trials they're doing from around the whole world. Okay. Is the for the Asian population, so uh, but yes, it, it, what, what it is is more that the first time you get, this device gets approval, the next clinical trials will be more faster to do that. So so I think uh, uh, United States is you know is what it takes to do the right research, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying to you that. Uh, but the one thing is, in many other countries, the approvals is very fast and you can do very faster. That's mm -hmm. one thing that United States is more slow in that aspect, sure. because FDA has more rigorous studies the way it is in other places. So in India, we already, with the experience that we have, uh, we can already start doing the business, uh, the, the, the helping the people there. Right. Uh, and the, But in Mexico, we're going to do soon, hopefully also Mexico in the next few months, we're going to be able to, to be in, in, in helping people more in the, so when, with when the approval you, so, of Mexico. So you, you are, uh, you know, you're so focused and passionate of the brain, but this, this technology seems like you do so many things, right? When, when you think of cancer cells throughout the body, you know, and all these other incurables, right? When you, and you said cure the incurable, you didn't just talk about the brain, buddy. You talk, you just, you're saying cure the incurable. Mm -hmm. So, so what stops you when you, when you, when you, from spreading yourself too thin, right? I mean, there's so many opportunities when you think yeah. about this technology, what, what keeps you focused? Because man, there's, there's so many directions you could probably go with this, right? But, but you got to stay focused on what, what your, what your mission is too, right? Yeah. Well, I, I think always when you have a disrupted technology, such as this uh, neurocytotron, which is the name of the technology, uh, you always, uh, especially when you are in a community for, for science, the way we are trained in medicine, on something new that all of a sudden, oh, it helps for everything, you, you lose that. Sure. It, you know, it's, it's the very nature. We're very yes. critical. And remember, uh, I, have, I, I, I was trained very rigorous in clinical as well as in science. So we, you have to first prove one concept, one area, one field, and then you can move later in the future. I mean, I, I would love to, to help. In fact, uh, I was telling the story. My wife, she suffered for, for 10 years. She had a damage in her back. Uh, she had a lot of pain in her back, uh, her bones from the uh, vertebras and the cartilage was pinching the nerves. She was so uncomfortable. I mean, she could not walk, she could not uh, ride away, She even sleeping, even sitting. It was, her quality of life was, and then she was cleaning in one side. When, when she, during this process that is developing gross and worse and worse, and eventually they just want to say she's going to have surgery. So I took her to India. And I reset the whole back of her, her neck, her lumbar portion, her knees, everything. And today, my wife, she just goes to yoga, jumps. This, I mean, is another person. And, I, she, I and she says, 
You suck at it. You I'm make sorry. It. it looks like it's like your your daughter's older sister. Not. I'm sorry, but not your wife anymore. I mean, I, so I, I you, know. And I know you robbed the cradle, but I don't think you robbed it that far, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but but you know, and so I, I, when I see over a lot of population in the United States, they suffer back pains and yeah. it's terrible. And today we have a therapy right there, you know. Wow. But the thing is. But you have to focus right now in the first specialty. And we need to also prove scientifically, show to the people what, what this technology does is, is real. It's not just, uh, you know, something because people oftentimes, especially when a new technology, which is different, is no a medicine, is no a drug, is no a vaccine, mm -hmm. is no a magic tablet. It's, it's a different therapy. And then people, well, the people say they only with magnets you can do better or something like this. Mm -hmm. So, and unfortunately, that's why oftentimes new technologies, if they don't have a controlled, double-blind, placebo-controlled study, uh, and randomized needs to be these studies, people will not believe that. Mm -hmm. And it takes time. That's why we are doing the fastest way. And I, in the state of help, for example, the United States last time when I planned in 2016, to build my first center, it will cost me $12 million. And it, will, and it will wait for me two years. And so then I said, well, you know, and I don't have all this money right now. Yeah. So in that moment, what I decided, I said, okay, maybe with the angel investment money, I can do in, in $2.5 million the study. Mm -hmm. And I can rent the place instead of buying and I can make that happen. So that's what I did last year. In fact, we ran the place. We had that. We have like over 25 people working with us in Mexico. We have over 10 people in the United States working for Mexico back and forth. And so now we have this uh, first study, very well done. And and that's why, it, you know, it becomes, you know, it's a kind of a, a kind of a strategic business because mm -hmm. we have to make sure that first we show that it really works. At the same time, but the, but but for the future, really the future, we have to have a headquarters where we do all the clinical trials, one centralized institution that we can do our own research, measure the new markers because this is a new a new a new world. Yeah. So so and especially and I don't want to say too much, but but you see, if you already have a treatment for a disease, you the competition, uh, you have to work more in. Uh, and some point is that always you need to prove that your product is better than the, the, yes, your yes. competition. Your differentiation. But here, differentiation. But yeah. here we have, have a problem because there is no cures for no. brain diseases. No, no. And so if I go to another area that is already somehow some partial treatment, I will have a lot of competition with that, you yeah, see? Absolutely. And that's why we have we have first to do something uh, uh, focused on the brain, focus one of the most difficult things. And you can see if we can make the difference and we can prove this, that we can, with this therapy, we can improve the quality of life. And eventually, I would like to cure all these diseases. That would be the great thing to do. That's yeah. why it's so important right now to focus on, 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 on the brain. Focus diseases. on the biggest challenge first. You know, Go big or go home, right, Q? Go big or go home. <laughs> okay, so let, you, use an example of, let's say, you know, um, the epilepsy, for epilepsy, I have scar tissue on my brain. I found out about a year ago, right? And mm -hmm. uh, I haven't had, had, you know, I had these seizures only when I hit the hit the ground with my head first, and that, and and it uh, promoted a seizure, some seizure activity, and the, and then it, uh, you know, go to the doctor, get checked out, and they did all kinds of tests, and they saw, saw uh, scar tissue on my brain, and and uh, like I said, never passed out unless uh, I, I was, I, I think, that dehydrated both times is after hard workouts. Um, and then, uh, you know, I've been fine. I, I'm, I'm very, to stay very, very hydrated now and I, I feel great. Right. Um, but well, what do you do to, to, to that scar tissue? Let's say, what do you, what, if it's epilepsy, what does your technology do to that scar tissue? Well, uh, well right now, um, <clears throat> because the, the experience that we have Gary was because of cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. a one in four children with cerebral palsy, they suffer seizures. It's a very common thing yep. to happen. And every time it's because there is irritation of the brain cells and that irritation makes the, the abnormal rhythm mm -hmm. for them. So, so this technology with us, number one, is that we have, when the cells are damaged, we send signals to the cell to repair, number yep. one. And second, that for that uh, epilepsy to be this issue's activity, there is two phases that goes uh, 
uh, the, the faces in order to make uh, the brain, the new, the cells to work perfect uh, uh, or, or a normal way, you have two stages. And when the, the second stage gets shorter, doesn't go all the way down to the how they should be, that's where the seizures really begins. This mm. is from the, the physiology of the brain. Okay. So with, with our technology, when we have this uh, brain stimulation deep inside the brain with the repair mechanisms, we teach the cells again to do the, the two movements in a synchronized way, no a synchronized way. And when you do one hour for 28 days, you reset the whole brain. And the resetting is what we are seeing that. So we found that these children with cerebral palsy who have epilepsy, after a, a one-month therapy, the EEG that was abnormal start to become normal. Wow. And that is something that the neurologist says, oh my God, what is this? So, uh, so right, and, and we have one case that was this uh, very rare syndrome that this poor child, 11 years old, had an epilepsy for like a status epilepticus, meaning you cannot control the epilepsy. They have to be in co you. Uh, in fact, the, the poor parents, they have taken, they say that there is, this is Roberto, you know, we go like every uh, twice a month, we take our child to the hospital, but we induce coma to our child because wow. if we don't induce in coma, he cannot stop his epilepsy. Oh. So we, he went to this treatment. And the surprise was that, oh, my God, we stopped the epilepsy. So they are they were like, this is no way because nobody and there is no medicine who can help him to this child. Yeah. And so when we saw that, I mean, this is, was a fantastic way that they, you know, the story was that they say every time our child, even they increase the temperature one degree, it goes to an status epilepticus, uh -huh. meaning no stopping, no control that. So one, during the course of the 28 treatment, actually the, the little kid, he catch a call and he got the temperature. So they were afraid, oh my God, we, we need to stop the mm -hmm. treatment because we need to put, we need to induce coma in yeah. a child to take him wow. for two days in the hospital. And that can't this. be good. And so, and so what happened is they decide not to, not to do anything, just to see that. And they, in fact, the child went to, you know, to 100 degrees, 102 degrees, and was nothing happened. So they just give him wow. a little medicine to go down. And the next day, said, Dr. Trujillo, you know, you will not believe what happened to a child. We have 11 years. We've been thousands of times going to the emergency room. Oh, sure. And for the first time, our child was that didn't happen. This wow. is this is something. Now, after I'm saying that, we, we still are in the clinical research. So we have to do a clinical trials for epilepsy as well. Sure. How long, how, long, how long ago was that? How old was he then? And how old is he today? And what's what's he like today? Uh, this, uh, the 11 year old yeah. kid? Oh, no. He, he, he was, I mean, now he's 12 years old. That was just uh, a year 13 ago. years. That was two, a year ago. And how, a year ago. And how's, that we how's, he, that. how's he doing? He's doing well. I mean, he, he, the parents, they say there's fun. Uh, um, the another two children with the cerebral palsy that I remember well, they, they just only have two episodes. And that's because they were traveling so much. But before, every week, they had two or three times a week. Now, mm -hmm. there's no longer that. For a year, only one they have it. So it's, you know, still is, uh, that, well, that's why in a clinical trial, this one in cere on cerebral palsy, we want to make one of our markers to make sure the EEG, the electroencephalogram, can we were testing before and after, and that's right. what we're going to see the evidence that this is is, is, is changing, you know. Hmm. Okay, so um, you know, and then I'll give you one more example. So the brain cancer thing, right? I know you you know um, that uh, the the technology has been out there for a little while, and there's been some brain some trials on some brain cancers that that. Uh, um, were worked mm -hmm. on. Can you tell? Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, I mean, yes, Gary. I mean, my, my area was, I, as I, I mentioned to you, I, I train in, in clinical neurology and neurosciences. Mm -hmm. for, and now it's more than, I, I am not an oncologist. Mm -hmm. uh, I am not a, a cancer expert person. Um, uh, however, when I met Dr. Kumar, uh, I was so surprised that what he was given. Um, that he has in his, uh, over his treatment in the last 10 years, they have treated over perhaps more than 300 patients. Uh, and Dr. Kumar has, there is also other clinicals in India, but in the population that he has 70, per, 70 patients, seven, seven, six, seven, zero, 
in the last 10 years with glioblastoma, the worst cancer in mm -hmm. the brain. And when I look at his data that he has, it's only the treating the patients for the quality of life. 37% of the 70 cases, they survive five years. Wow. Today in the literature, there is no cancer or glioblastoma no, survive more than two years. Yeah. So, and in oncol oncologists, they call them when you survive five years, a it's glioma, a that's it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a cure. No. So, so it's, it's been working in that. Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't work in, in that field. You know, personally, the neurocetonics, we don't work in cancer. But Dr. Kumar has working and he has other, uh, uh, a group of, of that they're working with him mm -hmm. in that part. So that is something uh, fascinating because uh, the cancer and in fact, also um, what is another component, because they, the people who are saying when they treat these tumors, the consistent of the tumor changes. So. For some, uh, with the neurosurgeons, that sometimes they can operate the tumor, after they have this therapy, this is it's easy for them to remove the tumor. Really? Wow. But you know, it's exactly, see, uh, but the field, remember, in, in his cases, I mean, this is not a control study. That's why that's only the conclusions we can only take it from what is there. But still, the, the most of the patients where they come later with him, they already been basically given all the therapy, and when there is nothing to give, sure. basically say, you go home to die, yeah. is when he has treated these patients, and the quality of life is an amazing. That's one thing I could tell you. Quality of life of these people treated with that, because there is no side effects. There is no nausea, vomit, illusion, hair. There is nothing. And there is no there, there is no surgery as well. And so this is a, so, so the few people who have been able, lucky to knew about this this technology, and they've been treated with no other therapy, the quality of life has been amazing. Yeah. So I, and I, I studied you know glioblastoma for days and days and days. While that was the that was what they told my told us my wife had for the first three weeks is glioblastoma. So we, I, I went out. I'm I'm stubborn. So I got you know where can I get another opinion? Another opinion. I got four opinions in the next in the next few weeks. Um, and then the last two came back, something other than glioblastoma. AO is the, is the type of ca uh, brain cancer my, uh, uh, Cheryl has. And, uh, you know, it looks a lot like glioblastoma. That's why I was mistaken for it. And, uh, but moves a little bit slower than glioblastoma, right? So, uh, yeah, I, I, I've read all about glioblastoma and, and the, you know, the best, the best in America that's, uh, you know, Duke, Duke came out with a, a a, um, a, a something that works maybe five percent of the time, basically using polio, uh, using polio and in, in, uh, mm -hmm. in brain cancer. But either way, yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a. Uh, odds are very low. I mean, if, if if this thing can work anywhere, like what you know, if it does work like you're saying, which I I, I know you you know know you well enough, you're 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 telling telling me what you what you're seeing. It's a it's a it's a it's a game changer in the world, right? Now, how 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 can you how can that go go through the right trials and all the other things to get that? you know, approved by the FDA, is that years away or, you know, what, what do you think? I, 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 I hope no, I hope very, very soon. I mean, I know they are working. Uh, there's a group from Dr. Kumar who trying to do the trials, but it's, it's been, uh, I haven't heard from them how close they are. But uh, <laughs> but already this technology, for example, is approved in India. So it, it, that's the one thing that, you know, I, I, I can say, you know, this technology can, Especially because what Dr. Kumar has, the, the technology is like a platform. Mm -hmm. And you dif you put a different program. So our focus on neurocetonics is focused on the regeneration of the sure. brain. Sure. This is a completely different, but uh, yeah, yeah. but I think it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating field too. I mean, there, there is so many fields that uh, also, for example, in diabetes, imagine if you can fix your pancreas, oh. you can be okay too. I mean, it's so many things is that you can do for this. Unreal. And, but and like, can you can you explain just a, a you know just a couple minutes on the you know exactly what the process this technology what does it do it's not using magnets oh, it's oh. not using radiation <clears throat> what what is it using to oh, get to oh, the cells oh, exactly. yeah yeah so 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 basically the the way we we uh, uh, for for the people who listen to you Gary to explain to that is always I give the example number one how we look to each other. And the reason we see each other and humans, we can have the vision is because when the light reflects on the objects and the people, mm -hmm. that is information that comes through our eyes. Sure. And in the back of our eye, we have a, the retina and we have some cells 
uh, some proteins in the retina, they call the rhodopsin. And these proteins are like the antennas. So what happens is the information comes through our pupils, going mm -hmm. to the back of the retina, and they activate the, this rhodopsin, this protein. So it's an antenna. So it's like the same like a radio in the music, you hear that. So, so they, get, they get activated, they change in the chemical reaction, switch into electricity, they travel to the optic nerve, all the way to the back of our head, in the occipital area, come back in milliseconds and we can see. Yes. So basically, r the reason why humans we can see is because we have an antenna in the back of our eyes called the rhodopsin. So the human body is built of over 90,000 proteins. So every part of our human body, we can communicate through the antennas. And wow. that's the hypothesis behind this. So what we have is in our brain, we have some cells that when this damage, there is a reactivity of other cells. And we have also cells called the progenitor cells. And this is an evidence, scientific evidence, that uh, the brain tries to repair. But the reason, and number one, we need to ask the questions, why in the first place, the brain cannot repair? Because like the skin, every three weeks, we have new skin. If you cut yourself, you know, but in three weeks you have the new, you know, if it's too deep, you get a scar, otherwise you don't see it, nothing. And so as a reason, because the skin has the capacity to come back in three weeks. Hmm. Uh, you know, the blood cells, they come back in 120 days. Other cells from the blood, the immune cells, they come back in different times. So the body can do that. But the brain has not. And, and the question is, imagine if every year, you know, they, our brain weighs between 1.2 to 1.4 kilograms. We have over this 100 billion cells in the brain. So when we are born, if you are 100 years, you will remain all the cells. But, uh, but what happens if imagine every two years our brain changes and we can change our brain? Yeah. So everything, but what is the function of the brain? It's everything. It's what we learn the knowledge, the information, all of a sudden, every year, every two years, we have to relearn everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have, so so the brain has actually factors that actually stop not to grow the, the brain. So we, we have a certain, what we call plasticity, you know, you get the yes. image, you can repair a little bit, but not too much. Mm -hmm. And that's why many things can help you rehabilitation, that's that, I mean, that's the brain. But then after that, there is no more. No, no, no more that can do that. So with this new technology, what we do is we send signals to the surrounding tissue where it's damaged. And when that signal they receive now, hey, here, basically we tell them, wake up. Yeah. You have damaged the brain. They don't know there was damage. Now all of a sudden there's damage. In cells, they go and repair that. Wow. And that's the, the technology, the evidence that we have preliminary in our work that is going to be published very soon, we'll see the evidence how exactly it's happening. And so the hypothesis that we have actually is now, you know, in this new evidence, scientific evidence, we will show that this is how it's happening. Wow. And so oh, really? this is this is what we, we make that. But see, so we don't, the, the human body knows exactly when it's to be repaired, you know, you don't need to tell them. So yeah. unfortunately, one of the major problems in the 90s, we were doing transplantation of cells inside the brain. And the cells can be alive there, but then we thought, oh, if we transplant the cells in cells, we say, oh, here is that, we need to repair. No, it's not that. It's like, a, a, imagine if the street needs to be repaired, we know exactly when it's to be repaired because we have our brain to know this situation, how it needs to be repaired, the road. Right, right. And the brain knows how to repair the road, actually. Huh. This is a very That's interesting wild. thing. That's wild. It's so, hey, I, I want to I eventually, I want to do another one with you because we, there's so much information here. I mean, my, my head's going, uh, you know, going crazy and I, and I love it because I, <laughs> I know everybody out there, is, their heads are going to go nuts thinking about can this stuff really happen? Can you really do these things? And who is this, who is this mad scientist uh, doctor, right? People are going to want to know you. So I, I want to get you on again, but I want to I round it out with a couple things. You know, I, I met your daughter, Jackie, yes. and your wife, Eileen, and, and what a great, great pair they are. Um, your daughter, daughter wants to follow in your footsteps on, on, on the science side, right? And then your yes. son, who I can't wait, wait to meet Danny, but uh, he's not. He's the entrepreneur, business-minded guy, and all that. And and what what we talk about a lot, Q, on our, on on this ditch digger, you know, uh, podcast is 
So often, great entrepreneurs have, have are, are often like engineering minded, operationally minded people that find somebody that's a good visionary uh, that to be on their team, or, or it's a great visionary who understands how to surround himself with great operationally engineering minded people. Now, you you seem to have both sides of the brain there, buddy, and and uh, and you're going to be a, a an amazing blessing to to the world because of that. But that's not that common. It, it's kind of neat that your kids are kind of following one, following one side of your brain, the other, the other side of your brain, from what I can see. <laughs> the right on the brain, <laughs> right on the left side, right? So, yeah. So it's so awesome to see that, and we talk about that all the time, right? Q, how how you know you got kind of if you got both, you're really you're you're dangerous. I mean, you could really do some amazing things in the world. If you got if you got one, which is more common, one side, and you surround yourself with people on the other side, you can do some amazing damage, right? So. Um, tell me, tell us about you know, quit, and you know, let's let's finish up with your family, the, uh, the amazing wife yes. of yours, and and your kids, <laughs> quick. Yeah, well, well, thank you so much. No, I I, I think I, I am very happy, and I feel I am blessed for having the wonderful family I have. Uh, you know, my wife Elaine, she's an uh, an American Italian. She was born in New York, and I I uh, so always I, t- I always I thanks my parents-in-law because. All her family are very tall, <laughs> but she's petite. I mean, so it's like I said to my parents, "Thank you for making my wife <laughs> like my size." You know, <laughs> we're like a five six anyway. But uh, so I, it has been a, a wonderful. I've been thirty years married with my wonderful wife, and the, uh, and we have two children, Daniel uh, and and Jackie, Jacqueline. So uh, I, I think you, it's amazing when when you see your children, your own children, and even uh, the way I feel today in the world is I feel the children should always feel like the children for all of us in the world. You mm-hmm. have to be trained to this point. Uh, and I think uh, since when they were, we live in Boston for 15 years, so they were born in Boston. So I met my wife in Texas. As soon as we got married, we moved to Boston. After five years, we have our kids, Danny and Jackie after. And so now Danny is, uh, is going to be 26 year old. Jack is 24. So the, uh, and so they, they, they really both, they, we exposed them, of course, to medicine. But Danny, he, he never liked medicine. He always likes numbers. In his brain, he likes numbers, numbers, numbers. Uh-huh. In fact, he's, that's why he's, he's, uh, he actually has created his own company. But because I need him, he's actually our business manager because we needed, <laughs> I needed his help, his sure. skills. So Danny, he, he went to college, but then after he spent uh, three years in, in Georgetown, he decided uh, came to Hopkins to do business and biotechnology. He mm-hmm. likes this field. So so he's been uh, very interesting. He says, you know, this is the business, how we need to do that. And and that's why I comp- what I was telling him, you know, the field of biotechnology is going to be growing. Health is one of the big components Absolutely. of our economy. And so this is something that he's very excited to be moving forward. And I, I, I see today, I have highly respect for, for the business component because I said, you know, this is the reason if I can be successful and our company, I know in a few years can be a multi-billionaire company, it's because we're helping people. But it's through the models of business. I mean, and this is mm-hmm. the great to be. And, and so it, it was an interesting thing. And, and Jackie, you know, my daughter, since she was a little kid, the same. She wanted to be a doctor. Always I want to be a doctor. So yeah. she she has all this mentality. And in fact, uh, um, but they, for her, we did a big change because, and, and this is something I wanted to mention to you because the, uh, you see, medicine, we, we train the way of the medical curriculum and we try about science, different cellular molecular biology and all that. Mm-hmm. But because of the, this technology that comes from out of the box, that you don't combine too much physics and engineers, there is some, but not as much. Mm-hmm. So so when, when Jackie, she was still in college, she met my friend, Dr. Kumar, my associate, and she says, oh my goodness, this is amazing. So I said, Pop, I, I really need to change. I also want to be a PhD, but in engineering and in physics. Wow. So then after she spent the years in college, she went to UPenn to train a post training in, in physics and engineering. And in fact, being there, she even discovered a device for helping people in the war, and when uh, soldiers, when they cannot breathe. And she developed, she invented already a device for helping to do a better way to check us to be this. So 24 you know? years old, and she's part of a team that invented something to, to do better tracheotomy, right? 
tracheotomy, exactly. And so this is, and then she's now come out with a new antibodies to treat cancer and having something else. So, so What's she's taking already, her so long? Come on, she's 24 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I know, she's like this. But now she's going to be your neighbor uh, from Chicago I because love she, yeah, she's she a loved the Northwestern University. So she's going to be the training from that. Awesome. But you know, Gary, I think uh, one of the futures for medicine, we have to combine the different fields that we have, yeah. always the combination, always Absolutely. multidisciplinary things needs to be done. You know, when I was in Boston and I helped to create the PhDs for Mexico to be trained more Mexicans in the United States and go back to Mexico, because the more partnership you have in the world about the uh, about uh, 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 that you can do even more business is going to be very important. But I think uh, one of the future, I mean, 100 years ago, the United States had created the MD-PhD program, a program that only uh, less than 4%, less, I mean, less than, well, I think I don't even know the percentage, but it's very small group of people, the top of the United States who train in this field, MD-PhD, at the same time. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, but I think the future for medicine that we have to combine physics we need to combine different things sure. and also we have to combine you know business yes because as a scientist we don't never train in business Absolutely. as a physicians we didn't train in business and finally we expose ourselves that we need to run an office a hospital and we don't know how to do it uh, yeah. and that's another <laughs> part that we have to do and i think the combination of the of the entrepreneurship all the uh, mentors we need to combine we have to be otherwise uh, you know, the future is coming. Yeah, otherwise we, we don't, don't, we, we, don't sol we don't solve we don't solve as many problems in the world as we potentially could in the speed that we could solve them in, right? Uh, exactly, exactly. Hundred percent. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and in, in, again, uh, the way the way we have success in our life, I believe I believe it. You know, God, uh, God helps us find find our strengths in our lives, right? And if we use those strengths, popular, uh, uh, if we use those strengths to our, our maximum ability, I should say, um, I believe we're rewarded. Right, and you don't even mm -hmm. have to think, you don't have to think about money and finances and all that. If you solve more problems than anybody else, and the and the t toughest problems in the world, you're going to be rewarded. That's the free enterprise system, and that's I believe that's a uh, that's guided by somebody other than ourselves. Right, if we're selfless, and and we and we you know we need people on our team to solve more problems. Right, and and more people are rewarded with entrepreneurship. I think so. Uh, I, I, you're you're doing a, a awesome stuff, and you're you're making such a difference in the world. So it's so such a pleasure to have you on our show. Um, we're, I want I want to I want to uh, end it pretty quick because because we're uh, because I, I want to make sure that we we save a lot of information for the next one we do with this guy. Um, but Quint, <laughs> Quentin also also comes up with his uh, his uh, Quentin true takeaways. Okay, so I want I want you to hear what he's he's been sponging the whole time here. And I, <laughs> okay, and I want to see no, please, please. you know he, he likes to get some messaging to the, our our audience and say hey here's what I took away from this. Yeah um, man, think about these things. Absolutely. Right? And since we're gonna have a part two, if you will, I, I'll save a, a good amount of it for the next one but a couple of true takeaways from this specific segment one and you kind of started with it dr roberto like uh, in your life is actually the start of your life shows it but be a sponge and learn everything I, you know if you was to embody um you know if you was to look at dr roberto from a perspective like i would say on the on the dictionary you see sponge i probably yeah. see him right there from that perspective you said a, amazing nugget though challenge uh, you know, challenges are nothing but opportunities for you to grow. And that's huge because if a lot of people started to look at, hey, look, something's coming up my way, but I, I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a champion. I'm going to take it on, not run away from it. You're probably more than likely growing that, in that aspect. Um, now, when you talked about desire and the extra mile and those three components, passion, purpose, and bringing solutions by helping people, that was phenomenal. <clears throat> that was phenomenal. Um, of course, now you said something. I don't know if you 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 know that you said it, but when impossibility comes your way, that's where creativity comes. Wow, uh, yes. you know, awesome. like that, you know, and it, and that's an embodiment of what you're looking to cure, which is all these diseases and um, and 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 um, it's 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 you if you think about it. Every person says, "Oh, this is impossible." Oh, that's impossible. The first thing you do is like, "Well, how can I get creative with it though?" And you do that. Uh, dream big and go to the moon. Absolutely. Right. You know, dream big and start small, but do it quickly. And more importantly, you are just ending it with the stake, with the flag um, down is if, if we really want to have exponential growth, if we really want to have uh, solve 
uh, problems all over the world, we must combine, we must partner, we must partner together, and we must have unity. And that's everything that you stand for. So uh, I'm excited. I appreciate all that you've, the knowledge you brought to the way, uh, Thomas Edison. I mean, Dr. Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, and your, and your slogan, uh, I think, you know, I call it your slogan, to cure the incurable is just awesome, right? I, again, you, you makes me look like I'm, I'm just a boring asphalt concrete paving guy. You know, mine's discovered the difference. I thought that's pretty exciting, but... It's nothing now. Well, you're solving a lot of problems on the pavement. No, yeah. no, but I, <laughs> exactly. But, but you know, also, you know, you have a new sign saying how to improve that part of the of, of, of the whole materials, and we're yeah, exactly true. the same humans. That's like true. This, you know, somebody, you know? Can, somebody can run, be, be driving a little high speed in a pothole and hurt themselves, right? I can save that from happening, so I, I can maybe save some you lives or some injury. You got it. So I'm, I'm, we're we're going to keep working on what we're doing, uh, but but yeah, you. It's just uh, you're a blessing to, 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 to the world and to America. Your, your, your American story is awesome. And uh, I want to be there to, to <clears throat> figure out what it takes to help you get that uh, center in, in D.C. So, Thank you. Thank <clears throat> you so much. I, I will need a little help, believe me. <laughs> we're we're going to be there for you. I'm, I, I've got a big mouth, as people know, and, and I'm going to get the word out, and we're going to figure out what you need and get the word out. So you're, you're, you're an awesome guy. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be your friend uh, first. And uh, and thank you so much thank for your time you. today. Thank you. And we'll see you next time on Dish Digger CEO. See ya.